Predestination with its conjunctives is mentioned six times in the Bible. The Bible, therefore, does not emphasize this truth as much as it does others like salvation, redemption, grace, and faith. This is one fact churches who major on predestination must seriously ponder upon. One theologian has defined heresy as truth given a due importance. <clears throat> if it is mentioned only six times in the Bible, then compared to the other major issues in the Bible, this, this truth is not emphasized. Okay? <clears throat> Otherwise, it would have been mentioned uh, more often. A survey of the six verses where predestination is found can give us insight into what it means. Here are the six, right? To do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. <clears throat> Here the context is what happened to Jesus, to Jesus Christ. God has predestined what occurred in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. <clears throat> there is element of determinism here. In other words, God really determined what would happen to Jesus Christ. And not only that, God also determined what would happen before the coming of Jesus Christ. So in this sense, the word predestined has deterministic uh, element. Okay? There is element of determinism here. In other words, God really determined what would occur, right? Uh, in the case of uh, Jesus Christ. So everything that Jesus Christ did and everything that happened uh, in the life of Jesus Christ until his resurrection was determined by God. It was planned, okay? <clears throat> Right, in Romans 8, 29, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Here, predestination has the element of a goal to be achieved. Right? The goal is to become conformed to the image of his son. So here, predestination has something to do with Achieving a goal, goal, a goal, and the achieving of this goal. Okay. <clears throat> Romans eight twenty nine. 
verse 8.30, And those whom he predestined, he also called. And this whom he called, he also justified. And this whom he justified, he also glorified. Also here, the element of a goal is present. God has predetermined people to go through stages to the final goal of glorification. Okay. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. Again, the element of a goal is present here, to our glory, meaning glorification, glorification of the saints. <coughs> Ephesians 1.5, He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the kind intention of His will. Again, the element of a goal is present here, to adoption as sons. That is, predestined us to adoption as sons or as children. Ephesians 1.11, Also, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined. In other words, Having been predestined, we have obtained the inheritance according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will. Here both the elements of goal and determinism are present. The goal is to obtain inheritance and determinism is he who works all things after the counsel of his own will. <coughs> Alright, so these are the six passages containing the word predestined. Now from this, from the foregoing survey of the six verses where predestination is found, we can see that the element of a goal is more emphasized than the element of determinism. From this we can make certain observations. Predestination is towards a goal to be achieved with certainty. Predestination is for good. The goals are set for good, to be conformed to the image of Christ, to be adapted as sons of God. So far, yeah. power. Power will be off. Back. Back. Yes. Back. Okay. <coughs> Predestination is for good. The goals set are for good, to be conformed to the image of Christ, to be adapted as sons of God. So far, in the passages surveyed, there is no predestination for evil. And that is very important. Okay? Now, logic would say, if there is predestination for good, there must be predestination for evil. That is logic. Right? Yes. That is why we need to be very careful. In the Bible, there is no predestination for evil. Because it is not God's intention to harm anybody. Mm. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Predestination is for the elect in Christ. Okay. Last but not least, predestination is through Christ. This is so because only those who are in Christ by faith are predestined for good goal. Amen. If we limit <clears throat> ourselves to these observations, from the six passages we have surveyed, oops, okay. if we limit ourselves to these observations from the six passages we have surveyed as to the meaning of predestination, it will be well for us. The, j the danger is when we major or minors leading us to truncated truth, which is not truth at all. <coughs> if we stretch out or blow out the subject of predestination beyond what the Bible says about it, we will end up believing in things that go against the more important truths in the Bible. Here is one example of a theological system which overemphasizes the subject of predestination. This is, again, Calvinism. Mm. Right? <coughs> Predestination, which is according to Calvinism, is a doctrine in Calvinism dealing with the question of the control 
that God exercises over the world. In the words of the West, Westminster Confession, this is the confession of the Calvinists, God freely and unchangeably ordained whatsoever comes to pass. In other words, everything that comes to pass has been predetermined. Right? And there are Calvinists who would even dare to say that even the thoughts of every person that would be living on this earth has been predetermined by God. <laughs> so all are virtually robots Robot. program you know? <laughs> the second use of the word predestination applies this to the salvation and refers to the belief that God appointed the eternal destiny of some to salvation by grace while leaving and remain the remainder to receive eternal damnation for all their sins even their original sin or sinful nature. The former is called unconditional election and the latter reprobation. In Calvinism, people are predestined and effectually called in due time, regenerated or born again, to faith by God. Calvinism places... <coughs> Calvinism places more emphasis on election than do other branches of Christianity, which is true. Okay? And that is from Wikipedia. Because of overemphasis on biblical subject of divine sovereignty, Calvinism has developed a theological system of strict determinism that God freely and unchangeably ordained whatsoever comes to pass. Carried to its logical conclusion, God even determined the existence of evil and ordained that sin exists. Some Calvinists struggle to avoid the logical conclusion that God is the author of sin and evil. Now, if everything has been determined, that means even the, even the existence of evil and sin, has been determined by God. Now, I have, I have uh, studied Calvinism in depth. I became interested in uh, Calvinism uh, since the 70s, right? early 70s. <clears throat> I have uh, read and I have studied Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion, a four-volume book as thick as that, okay? <laughs> because that, was, that is the basis of uh, Calvinism. <clears throat> and it is overly emphasized that God is sovereign and in control of everything. His omniscience or foreknowledge actually is the tool to determine what will come to pass. Right? So everything is under his control. Well, actually no one will uh, question that. Because mm -hmm. God is in control. But how he does the control, that's the issue. Yes. How does he does how does he do the control? Right? <clears throat> like, for instance, uh, in a democratic government like ours, we are free. But our freedom is within the context or without, within the bounds of our constitution. As long as you do not go beyond the bounds of the constitution, you are free to do whatever you want to do within that bound. In the same manner, everything is within the sovereignty of God. Everything. But the Calvinists would not agree that God has a permissive will. In other words, to the Calvinists, 
God has only sovereign will. Ano nyo yung sabihin? Yeah. Uh, permissive will means that God allows some things that are against His sovereign will. He allows sin. But eventually, sin will be will be dealt with by God because everything is within His sovereignty. As much as every violation of the Constitution will be dealt with by the authorities right? implementing the Constitution, it will be dealt with. So we are free in the sense that we can do whatever we want within the bounds of law. But once you go beyond the law, right, the sovereignty of the Constitution is also applied to you. In the same manner, God allows things, but then eventually everything will have to be accounted for. Because God is sovereign of the law. Right? Our free will is within the sovereignty of God. You can use your free will, but because you are under the sovereignty of God, you are accountable for its use. Mm -hmm. so you can use it for evil, you can use it for good. Then you are held accountable. The only reason why creatures like us, intelligent creatures like us, can be held accountable by God is because we have the God-given free will, which he gave to Adam in the first place. Okay? So, yes, God is sovereign over all, but how does he exercise that sovereignty? Does he exercise it by determining everything that comes to pass? Ano ordain ba lahat niya ang nangyayari? Inordain ba yung pagkakasala ni Adam? Did God ordain that Adam should fall into sin? If He ordained that Adam should fall into sin, then Adam must not be held accountable. He was only following the will of God. Because God willed that He disobeyed. If He obeyed, then He disobeyed. The will of God. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a paradox, you know, that uh, many companies are trying to avoid. You know, <clears throat> by the way, uh, Calvinism is not is not a homogeneous uh, theological system. Right? Far from it. There are five pointers. There are four pointers. You know, <clears throat> there are deviants. And variants to Calvinism. <laughs> now, at least there are honest, right, psychological or intellectually honest Calvinists who would admit to the logical conclusion of Calvinism that God determines everything that comes to pass. They would admit that God is the author of sin and evil. As his problem, yes. The God is the author of sin. And he built. John Piper admits these are Calvinists who are who are what shall I say? Brave enough to admit the logical conclusion of their beliefs. But there are Calvinists who would invent you know, invent uh, logical uh, <coughs> Philosophical <laughs> reasoning in order to avoid the conclusion that God is the author of evil. They have what they call as, uh, you know, uh, second, what do they call it? Second cause. Right? There is the immediate cause or the proximate cause of evil, and there is the remote cause of evil. The immediate cause of evil is the sinful nature of man, right? Because of the sinful nature of man, man commits sins. That is the immediate or proximate cause of evil, because man is evil. And therefore, 
y invisible. But the remote cause is God. Because he ordained. Mm -hmm. right? That that man commits my sins. But ultimately, you know, we have what we call as uh, root cause analysis. Right? This is the this is the uh, result. Okay? What what is the immediate result uh, cause of this? This. What caused this? This. What caused this? This. What caused this? This. And what caused this? None. So this is the root cause. Right? <laughs> if God is the remote cause of sin and evil, then it stops with God. Yes. It means that God is the root cause of evil. It means that God is the author of evil. Yes. He is the author of sin. And if that is the logical conclusion of this predestination of the Calvinist view, then everything is the responsibility of God. So why will he punish people who, all, who only obeyed what he obeyed? It's, it's uh, you know, illogical. No? <clears throat> anyway, this is what I say, I'm saying. If you go beyond what is revealed, there are only six passages in Scripture, and they have built so big a theological edifice out of these six. So if you build a mountain out of them all, uh, you will create a lot of inconsistencies. You will even go against the explicit uh, uh, truth in the Bible. And you are bound to twist everything that goes against what you what you believe. So let's not go beyond. You know, if the Bible says only six things about predetermined, let's not let's not say more than that. If you say more than that, you are bound to commit error. Unfortunately, this is what has been done. Okay. Ephesians 1.5, he, what is the meaning of predestination through Christ? He predestined us to, to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. The verse says predestination is through Christ. Since predestination is through Christ, the bi biblical predestination cannot be evil. There is no such thing as predestination to hell. <laughs> Why? Through Christ. Because only Christ has removed the curse of God upon sinners. All sinners deserve to die because the wages of sin is death. But Christ has redeemed us from all divine curses because of sins. And made it possible for believing sinners to be predestined to be adopted as children of God. Remember that in our state of being sinful, we can only be found holy and blameless in Christ alone our substitute, representative, and surety before God. Christ alone has met the two requirements of God from us. Perfect obedience for us to have eternal life and death for our sins. Only those who are in Christ by faith alone are predestined by God for good. That much we can be sure of. Right? Going beyond what is revealed is quite dangerous. Yeah. <clears throat> so we better not tread on dangerous ground. Oh, questions and answers. Any questions on predestination? Yung sasagot, magpapapansin. Just remember those things, huh? Predestination is for good. 
the, the, the opposite is not mentioned in the Bible. So let's not go beyond uh, what is written. <clears throat> One of the verses being used by Calvinists is the verse that says, He, he shows mercy on whom he shows mercy. And he shows compassion on whom he, he shows compassion. <clears throat> but it does not say, he will not show mercy on whom he will not show mercy. <laughs> and he will not show compassion on whom he will not show compassion. Right? You know why? Because he shows mercy on all. And he shows compassion on all. Yan din ang nakasulat sa Romans 11 yata. In terms of... Judas yes. plan to Christ's execution or for betrayal. Yes. <clears throat> Was it part of God's plan? Yeah, I will tell you. It is God it is plan, part of it's God's, God's plan. plan. Yes. But it's not part of God's plan for him to think evil, right? True. Think for Judas evil? to think evil. No. What God did is to use what he thinks as evil yeah, and use that. To accomplish his plan. You got me. Judas meant it for evil. Yeah. Judas, Judas meant, meant it for evil. evil. Yes. Yeah. Judas God meant it for evil. God meant it for God good. meant it for good. Yes. So should we thank Judas? <laughs> <laughs> Again. No, because he meant it for evil. evil. <laughs> Because of evil, we can't thank him. And we have the rules. Uh, if the Bible is quiet, then we should uh, quiet as well. We, we must be quiet also. <laughs> well, but if, if he would have repented... Yes. Yeah, he would have been saved. Yeah, he would have been saved. Yes. But, uh, there's, a, there's a verse that says he repented. Yeah, but, uh, he repented, uh, but I, don't, I don't know what kind of repentance. Yes. He did repent. He repented, but it is a repentance that needs to be repented of. <laughs> he repented because he was caught. Because he was, he was. Uh, Indeed, he felt guilt. 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 He felt guilt. That's why he commits suicide. He had remorse, but he did not repent. Yeah, but yeah, remorse, but not repent. Yeah. Some translations say repent. Some say remorse. Yeah, that is where the confusion comes. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, true repentance would have brought him. Uh, back to God. So, so that means he, he did true repentance again, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, true repentance is brought about by uh, realizing the goodness of God. If you will read Romans 2, 4, the goodness of the Lord leads you to repentance. If it is fear of the punishment that leads you to repentance, that is a repentance that needs to be repented of. So, what was his goal in uh, betraying Christ? In, in betraying, betraying Christ. Christ. Betraying Christ. He, he was after the money. <laughs> not only the money, because he threw the money away. Ah, yeah, after realizing that Christ will not save himself. Yes. Oh, yeah. They have seen uh, Christ perform miracles. They have seen Christ escape uh, being stoned many times. That's right. Why would this be different? Could it be that Judas was hoping Jesus would lead a rebellion, That's start a rebellion? That is another thing. No? Uh, but through the he, death of Christ, he might be... have thought, as some, uh, as some of the Jews thought, that if Christ is pushed against the wall, mm. yeah, he would uh, proclaim himself king and take over. Mm. That was what uh, some of them expected. Judas was not Judas was not chosen by Christ. Judas? Was Judas chosen by Christ? Yes. No, he was he was included. He is elected. He was he was chosen among the twelve to be part of the He was among the twelve. Yes. But is it not uh, he he forced himself to be to be part? No. He was chosen. Because the way the others were chosen. 
because you, was, you, can read, really you can read the account that one mm -hmm. night Jesus prayed all night. Mm -hmm. The following morning, he chose the twelve. Yeah. So that night he must have been praying for wisdom from his father. Yeah. And not only that, to help him. Mm -hmm. the, the twelve was chosen from among many yes. disciples. Yes. Yeah. God, uh, Jesus, chose twelve from among his disciples. In other words, yeah, there were many disciples, yeah. and he chose twelve. Yeah, and one of them was Judas. Judas, I am inclined to believe that Judas was a true believer at the beginning. Why? Because uh, he was even given. Uh, hours, yes. hours to heal, yeah, he hours yes. over he uh, evil spirits. Yes. Oh, only a true believer could do that. So I am inclined to believe he began as a true believer in Jesus Christ. But fell from grace. But fell along the way. Now, there is such a thing as apostasy. And I believe uh, Judas is, an, is a perfect example of an apostatizer. <laughs> but remember, there was a verse that says, one time he gathered that will, and he said, Don't you know that all of you, that will, you will be sitting in judgment, of, you will be sitting on 12 thrones, and you will be judging Israel. Kasama si Judas. Kasama si Judas pa doon. Before he fell. Yeah, that was before he fell. So that was like prophetic on the part of Jesus to say, you you will be enough. Yeah. And when he, he chose them, he will raise them all on the last day also. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. He fell. <coughs> so, ibig sabihin, yung nangyari kay Judas, predestined siya for hell. Yeah, predestined. No. No, not no. for hell. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not for hell. Will, no. He was, he was predestined to upon. Kasi yun ang gamit ng... Kasi yun ang ginagamit din na argumento ng mga Calvinists. Uh, some predestined to uh, life and then to hell. Because what happened to uh, uh, Judas? No, that was, uh, that was his choice. Because they said uh, before that, uh, it is already uh, Jesus said that one will be... Uh, no, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And have, I chosen, have I not chosen 12? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. 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 That was towards the, the end. Yes. Yeah. There is, I uh, cannot remember the prophetic psalm where, where uh, Judas was prophesying. Uh, and he said, yes. my friend has raised his heel against me. So he was considered a friend mm. by Jesus Christ. There are indications in the Bible that Judas began as a true believer. But fell from grace uh, along the way. In other words, he turned back from God. It's, it's just so intriguing when Jesus uh, whispered to him, go and do what you, you must do and do it quickly. Mm. It's like, uh, it's it's like no. <laughs> it's no. It's no. do it quickly. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> Fast track it. No, but uh, that was the time when uh, the Bible said uh, Satan has entered Judas. Mm -hmm. So he must yes. he must be whispering to Satan. Ah, uh, yeah, in proxy, in yeah. proxy. Like, uh, do what you, what you uh, need to do. So I mean, nabasa ko na rin so many times. If God is sovereign will of God, mm -hmm. sovereign yung Dios, and uh, He knows everything. Oh, yeah. Why did He allow evil? <laughs> Why did He allow evil? evil. Uh, evil. Because I mean, he, he question. yes. Because he is a God who can solve any problem. And he is a God who does not shy away from problem. Sin was the greatest problem that confronted God. And if he shied away from it, 
it would reveal uh, some weakness yeah. in his character. Eh, paano kung magka-problema yung kuan, angel niya? Eh? Hindi mo na-create ang tao kasi magka-problema yan. Eh. Kuan yan. Uh, magkakasali, eh? magre-rebel niya sa akin. And therefore, uh, I won't create man anymore. What assurance would the other created beings have? Well, he shied away from a problem. What if I run into problem? What will he do? Is it, is, is it safe to say that this permissive will yeah. is the same deceit na pumunta kay Lucifer? That God allowed him, you know, to, to have this choice? To rebel against God? No. The choice is there, right? But God created uh, beings, intelligent beings, that are in His image. In other words, they have free choice. Right? The, our free will is one of the uh, aspects of the image of God in us. Right? <clears throat> now, if God, if God created man with, uh, without free will, that means all created beings will love him because they are forced to love, to love him. All created beings will obey him because they are programmed to obey him. There is no fun in that. <laughs> No, no authenticity. Love. Yeah, there is no authenticity. I mean, no authentic, authentic love. Authentic love. Ako, kung uh, mamahalin ako ng asawa, dahil pinipilit ko lang. <laughs> hindi ba? Hindi... Hindi joyful. Hindi exciting. Oh. So, it I mean, answers the question, Kuya Ma, na ito, you angels, sila, ano, meron silang will. Well, they have free will. They have free will. And if... And if they will obey God, right, they obey Him out of their own free will, not because they are being forced, right, to obey Him, but because they love, out of their willing heart, they love to obey Him. Pero hindi siya naman. It's the same with, the, with our children, you know. It is, uh, it is very heartwarming that they obey what you want you know, because they love you rather than they are just being forced. That being said, so na, we answered already the question, mm -hmm. uh, saan ang galing yung seed? So, it, hindi nang galing kay God, nang galing kay Lucifer. Nang galing sa choice mo. Uh, sa choice yeah. ni... Uh, you are, anyone who sins is fully accountable right. because it is your will. Oh, it is that's it. That's the answer. God is no way responsible for sin. Right. Now, when God created beings with with their own free will, God took a risk. Mm -hmm. And God is uh, fun. Uh, he will not He will not shy away from any risks mm -hmm. because He is sovereign. I mean, He can He can devise ways and means. To address the, the risks, like in the case of giving man a free will, he ran the risk of disobedience. If, if a man would use his free will uh, in an evil way, right, he will have a problem. Man will have to die. But he loves man. So he has to devise a way in order to save man. Yeah. <clears throat> so God allowed God allowed uh, people to exercise their free will, and they, they the free will is within the sovereignty of God. Do not go beyond that bound, right? Which means that our will is bound by the will of God. If you go against that will, then you are accountable. Without free will, no accountability. Yeah, without free will, uh, there is no accountability. If I am programmed, if I am programmed, 
as uh, some Calvinists would uh, say, I am programmed to disobey, right? And I disobeyed. I'm not responsible. And you, and you get punished. You can point the finger to God. Yeah, you can point the finger to God. It is because of you. Because I have an article about the, the creation. When he created uh, the angels, he created at the same time he created the heavens and the earth. Simultaneous. Yung, is it is it uh, possible that when he created the angels, you see la Lucifer, he sinned, correct? And then prior to the creation of man, eh, then mm -hmm. sa seven days, eh, if he already sinned, okay, and uh, he already made the choice, and he created man, na meron ding ng choice, mm -hmm. then alam na ng Dios kung ano na this guy. He he can also make the wrong decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, because yeah. yeah. the angels himself made the wrong yeah. decision. Right? Sin took the risk. Right? Sin took the risk. So, so in yung kaya nagkaroon na ng lang planning yun. So, so hindi mali talaga yung Calvinist don. Isa lang pa. Aray ko. Hindi talaga mali talaga sila sa kayo. Buti na lang, wala si Nanay Viola. <laughs> Some Christians actually believe that the Indians were created later. Which is not uh, logical because when, when uh, there are some passages that when God created the universe, the earth, they marvel at the creation. So that means they should have been Existing yeah, before, before the uh, great, uh, yeah, and and the serpent was would not have been, you know, uh, called this. It's a paradise. Oh, uh, hindi siya ma possess ng uh, spirit ni Lucifer, ni Satan. So that means they pre-existed before the creation. They pre-existed before the creation of man. They were created first. Before uh, God created uh, angels, angels were uh, a higher order of beings than men. Uh, if uh, we will base our uh, uh, assumption on Ezekiel 28, they were created out of uh, precious stones, whereas we were created out of the dust. Okay. Uh, you remember uh, the psalm that says, What is man? That you, are yeah, that you, you are mindful of him. But you have created him a little lower than the angels. So we are a little lower than the angels in uh, the order of creation. But in terms of importance, only man was created in his image and likeness. This was never said of the angels. Yeah, it was uh, not said with the angels, but if we take uh, the, the free will of man as part of the image of God, then we must, uh, we must give that also to the angels. Yes, the angels. Uh, Satan was a sin, right. and he would have sinned. He could not have sinned without free will. I, I remember some years back when I was a young Christian, I think it was my brother who said, we can, we can all point our bad situation to Adam and Eve. Maybe if it, I was there and my wife, we would not have disobeyed God. <laughs> so how, sure are you? How, sure. how sure are you you will not be tempted? But uh, uh, <laughs> yung, yung, uh, uh, created uh, lower than the angel. Some Bible scholars, they, are referring, uh, they said that it's referring to Jesus Christ. Yeah, because the Jesus Christ became a man. Right? So he became a little lower than the angels. That you are mindful of him. That is a messianic uh, passage. Right? Because God Christ became a man. So he became a little lower than the angels. In his humanity. Humanity works. Right? <clears throat> uh, any more questions? Yes. Don't you think that uh, Judas yeah. 
<laughs> apart from apart from <laughs> apart from the money, yeah. was it not a revenge to Christ because wow. he, he came from the Benjamin tribe, and yeah. because Benjamin tribe Saul came from that, and mm. through Saul, because of uh, David, because of David, Saul fell because he, he, he conquered, and then their praises went to David more. Or mm. your yeah. So after after he fell. It's like that kingship was taken out from them. Mm -hmm. And then they could know again. So from the Benjamin tribe, probably was thinking of a revenge to the kingship mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. the line of Judea. Uh, Are you getting me? Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I'm revenge just thinking of out of there. That means because that kingship was taken from them, mm -hmm. now he came as he was chosen to be part, then to be betrayed Christ mm. for the revenge of mm. what happened to Saul. Yes. Mm. Don't that I mean is that's what I'm 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 trying to let us discuss this issue. Well, <laughs> I have I have not uh, actually encountered that. Yes. Uh, ah, okay. it's, 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 yes. Because bring, uh, Judah came from the Benjamin tribe. Who are warriors? It sounds like father to the, the <laughs> book of Esther. <laughs> yes, you yeah. see. So for uh, uh, him and the uh, descendant uh, of the uh, Amalekites, uh, you know, try so to cut the line of Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so for taking that pride and that position, it's time for him also to do it to the son of David. <laughs> so far. Uh, there, are, there is no indication, either in the Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament yes. or uh, in the accounts of the Gospel about the, that kind, yes. that kind of promoting for Jesus. Agree. There is no explicit scripture. It's an inference on the what is uh, explicit is uh, Judas, Judas' love for money. That was the, yeah, he was a treasurer. Yeah, I remember he was dealing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? At the, the, at least the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of these, I think it was Caiaphas, he said, you don't understand anything. It's better for one man to die than the whole nation perish. Mm -hmm. So perhaps uh, they were thinking, because Jesus was uh, like forming a new kind of leadership, which could become the new uh, what, the new David or the new Solomon, mm -hmm. and uh, they know that they were no match for the Roman imperial army, and so better to sacrifice one man for the whole than for the whole uh, nation to be ma massacred. Yes. So maybe he was in collusion. With the uh, with the Pharisees and Sadducees, that he will be the instrument to stop this man, mm. and maybe he That's thought right. he was doing the right thing, like Saul. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Saul. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But again, this is just theory. I'm just overextending. <laughs> it's not written in scripture. I'm just looking at the but, surrounding uh, verses. You know the the fact that Jesus, or, I mean Judas, returned the money. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that means what he expected of Jesus Christ did not materialize. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Because Jesus did not take arms. Yes, mm -hmm. because Jesus Christ uh, did not defend himself. Yes. Right? Uh, he was disappointed he, at the same time he, he was could, regretting. Uh, Judas might, might have thought, you know, I'll get away with this. You know? mm. uh, nobody knows. Uh, I betrayed him. If he defends himself and crush the Pharisees, you know, nice. nobody would know. Right? But uh, Judas saw that he did not defend himself. He willingly subjected himself to torture and eventually to crucifixion. So now uh, everybody it, will it, know. <laughs> is it also a case of uh, misunderstanding? He misunderstood Jesus. Yeah. He, 
In fact, all of them, all of them, yeah, all of them, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. So it was a surprise to them that Jesus Christ would be crucified, although several times he told them. Yes, he re no? They all resisted, no more. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, Peter said, uh, no, Lord, uh, be it far from you. You will not die. You, you will lead uh, Israel to victory, you know. He will not die. <clears throat> they were looking for uh, a, a victorious Messiah who will lead them against uh, the Roman Empire. So it is very probable that uh, Jesus is, uh, was also believing that yeah, uh, Jesus would yes. lead a new, a new yeah. powerful army. Yes. Mm. Okay. But uh, as I said, what happened to Jesus Christ in his life, death, and resurrection? And all the events that have happened in his life were ordained by God. So it doesn't mean that uh, God is responsible for the sin of uh, Judas, or God is responsible for uh, the sin of uh, Peter. But uh, he used the weaknesses of these people to accomplish his, uh, his goal. He has foreknowledge, you know. So he he used what he foresaw as weaknesses of men. He used them to accomplish his uh, his uh, wisdom. Walang yeah. bangsang wisdom niya. <coughs> what is also remarkable that when Jesus identified the betrayer, because they were asking, "Who is it, Lord? Who will betray you?" And he identified him, the one who lives, right? So it's remarkable that the other apostles did not even have any negative reaction, <laughs> right? Some, some of them even as is it me Lord, is it me Lord? Maybe they were thinking it was a good role to play. <laughs> if, if Peter was trying to defend Jesus, he would have stood up, raised his sword, Jesus, I will kill you now, you betrayer. No reaction like that. No, because uh, up until that time, they did not really believe that Jesus Christ would die. Mm. Up until that time. <laughs> they, they, they would not believe, even if Jesus told them, they would not believe of a dying, in a dying Messiah. They would not believe. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so, any more questions on uh, election and predestination? I can tell you the amount of literature, you know, the amount of literature uh, written about this subject of election and predestination is unbelievable. It's unbelievable how Christians can major on minors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whereas, you know, there was a time when the knowledge of Christians about the resurrection of Jesus Christ is, according to a Bible scholar, can be written at the back of the postage stamp. How much? Can you write <laughs> at the back of a postage stamp? <laughs> but but very, the faith very was, little. But, but the faith but, was strong. Yeah. But the faith was very strong. Yeah. But uh, you see, resurrection is a major Christian belief. But resurrection has been a minor right, thing for Christians. Before uh, World War II. There was very little written about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there were a lot written about election and predestination. So Christians have been, for many centuries, have been majoring on minors. Sidetracked. We have been sidetracked. <clears throat> you know, Satan will allow you to be interested, you know, in the minutest 
thing in the Bible. Just don't focus on the major ones. If you focus on the major ones, then he, he is in trouble. <laughs> but as long as you major on minors, he will allow you to fight to fight it out, you know. <clears throat> I'm not uh, kidding. The amount of literature produced in the debates, you know, between Armenians and Calvinists, uh, the amount of literature is staggering. Volumes upon volumes of books, even until, uh, until now. <clears throat> So I would uh, urge you to major on majors <laughs> and forget about <laughs> not to forget about the minors, but uh, you know, uh, let's keep them where they they should belong. You find a doctor in five minors. Doctorate on minors. <laughs> PhD on <in> minors. <laughs> All right. So wala na po. I think we we made it to our uh, target. Yeah, target yes. time. What about uh, Brother Mario? Mar, maybe Any he more, has some uh, regarding the destination. Yeah, actually, Brad, yung inano po ni Pastor is binigyan po kasi yun yun ng materials na patuloy kong inaaral. So about dun sa sinasabi ni Pastor, karagdagal lang po sa aking kaalaman na about dun sa view ng Calvinism at saka ang tinuturo ni Pastor. Kaya wala po akong question, Pastor. Alright, uh, wrapping this up, uh, election and predestination by, as understood by Calvinists and Armenians, differ in one major point. Calvinists believe that God elected some to salvation and rejected or abandoned the rest of humanity to perish in hell based on his sovereign will. Right? The election to salvation of some is completely based on God's grace alone. In Calvinism, in Arminianism, the election of God is based on his foreseen faith of those who believe in Jesus Christ. Because God has foreknowledge of what will come to pass. Right? He saw those people who would believe in Jesus Christ. And because he saw that they would believe in Jesus Christ, he elected them. Right? You got the difference? Yep. God, in Calvinism, just chose out of his own sovereign will, you know, without any regard to anything, out of his own grace. They call it sovereign grace. He elected some to salvation, not because some are good or some of them are good, you know, no, nothing, nothing like that. It is purely by grace. That is why it is called unconditional election. <coughs> in Arminianism, it is conditional election that is conditioned on your foreseen faith. Right? God foresaw your faith. God saw that you will believe in Christ and therefore he ordained, he, he, he elected you to salvation. But the Arminian view still does not make much sense because parang, parang sa ating uh, expression, lutong makaw. Mm. Oh, <clears throat> if he foresaw that he would, that that person would believe, yeah, there is no need to elect. No need to elect. Because they will be so. Because if he believes, he will be saved. No need to elect. Maka sa parahan nanday na sumilip ka na dati. So ito ang gagawin kong discard. As I said, there, there are weaknesses, you know, in both. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the difference. One is based on God's sovereign uh, will. The other is based on God's foreknowledge for the future. Foreknowledge that those people who will believe in Jesus Christ, in elect sila. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> but uh, in fairness, 
they both use passages in scriptures to support their claim. But, this is what I'm saying, they are taken out of context and uh, they are out of the overall the history of redemption. So, <clears throat> we thank God that uh, through the, the illumination of the Holy Spirit, we are uh, given to understand what biblical election is and that we are elected in Christ, which means that <clears throat> Christ has been elected as our substitute in our behalf. So that when God elected him, it was good as if he elected us. Right? And when Jesus Christ obeyed God perfectly, because he was our substitute, it was as if he obeyed God perfectly in his person. And therefore, we are holy and blameless before God. Amen. Right now. Right here. Right now. Right? <clears throat> So, lahat po tayo. Lahat tayo ay elect. Right? We are elected in Christ. And we are united with Christ by faith alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let's all rise up. And, uh, <coughs> may, uh, I request uh, Pastor Jonas to lead us in closing prayer. And let's uh, pray. Our God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. Again, Lord, all of us here stand before you, Lord God, our Holy God. Father, again, once more, we thank you, Lord God, for thy word, and thy word alone is true. Lord. God, you have opened our hearts. May we continue, Lord God, to obey you, to obey your word, and to, to follow your ways, Lord. Thank you, Father, as we, as we depart from this place, Lord God. May your presence be with us, Lord. Uh, tomorrow, Lord God, uh, we have our own services. Uh, again, we just thank you, Father, for your renewed strength and uh, wisdom to all of us, Lord God, that we be able, Lord, to understand, Lord God, your word in our lives. God, we thank you for all the souls that are present here right now. We thank you, God, for giving us Kuyamar, Lord God, to teach us, Lord, Indeed, Father, we are grateful, Father, for, for his life and his uh, family, Lord God, that uh, we pray that you would continue to bless him, Lord God, continue to strengthen him, Lord God, protect him, give him good health, Lord God. And um, to win up, Lord, we believe in your word, Lord God, you said in Second Timothy 2, 2, Lord God, um, Lord, that you have given us, Lord God, uh, for, for him to train us that we may be also able to teach others also. So, Father, enable us, Lord God, to open our, our ears, our spiritual ears, that we may hear your word alone, Lord God, in our lives. To change us, to transform us, Lord God. And pray for those uh uh, our brothers and sisters, Lord God, who are uh, misled, Lord God, by by uh, certain teachings, Father, that are contrary to your word. Lord God, may we always concentrate, Lord God, on the major pieces, Lord God, of your word and continue to pray for one another. Father, we thank you. We ask for forgiveness for all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord God. Lord, again, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Christ alone we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.